John Fedger here with mobilehomeinvesting.net and in this video I want you to walk through three mobile homes uh, that are being offered for sale by a lovely park manager and I'd like you as you walk through these videos we're gonna walk through them pretty quickly but as you walk through them I'm curious what repairs would you do as an investor purchasing these properties what repairs would you do or would you outsource um, that's my question for you let's go take a look at the first one Well, what repairs did you think of? What repairs did you see? What repairs did you write down? Uh, what repairs would you do yourself or maybe outsource to somebody else or more professional? Uh, and then I'm also curious, you know, if you're an investor, uh, what would be your exit strategy? That's so important to understand. And in fact, the initial question that I asked, what repairs would you do? That's not exactly a full question or a fair question. It is a full question, but what it would be a better question is, what repairs do you need to do? What repairs do you see? if you want to rent the home or if you want to sell it with payments or if you want to sell it for top dollar retail price and depending on the home is it a 1980s home is it a 2010 home you know those can be different retail prices and they are even if you sell it on payments or if you rent it or you're selling it for a discounted cash price so it's really important to understand your exit strategy by the way a disclaimer first if you're just a a person that's going to be living inside of this mobile home that you purchased or that you want to acquire Feel free to do the repairs that you want to do that makes the home most comfortable for you because you're living there. It should be some place that you love and respect and want to come home to every day. So this video really doesn't pertain to you necessarily, but, make sh but realize that if you do over improve the home, when you sell it, you may not get all that money back. Somebody may not see the value in it quite as you did. Um, but still, if you're gonna live there, you know, do the repairs you want, make sure you love the home. Hopefully you're there for a long time. Back to the video, and if you're an investor that's purchasing this property with the intent to create value, uh, to create a profit and resell it or rent it, let's talk about that. Right here, there's a spectrum of the home should be torn down, it's a complete handyman special, you should pass on it, uh, or all the way over on the other side to it's over repaired. There's repairs that should not have been done, you're not gonna get the money back out, um, 
and it's just over rehabbed. So let's talk about, uh, we'll talk about kind of what the, those repairs are in just a second. But it's first uh, very important to understand your exit strategy. If you want to sell this mobile home for a discounted cash price, uh, you know, you just want to maybe double your money, but you want to kind of get in and out pretty, pretty quickly, then you may want to do only certain repairs that get the home to a livable standard or above livable, or maybe slightly below, li below livable. If you want to do more work and you want to get the home rent ready, you want to rent it out or be able to sell it for a retail price, you have to do more work to the home. So to get it rent ready, we're going to do all these repairs plus these repairs. And we'll talk about these repairs in just a second. And to sell it for like a really attractive or to get the home really attractive when you walk in and your, your honest opinion is, wow, this is nice. This is really, really nice. Um, that's, you know, how we can sell it with for, uh, excuse me, sell it to a retail buyer, uh, sell it for top dollar, sell it to a bank finance buyer who's going to go to a bank. The home has to approve, the buyer has to approve, the area and park has to approve as well. Um, and the home has to be really, really nice. Comps have to make sense. And again, to get somebody to fork over six figures in cash or go to a bank, the home has to be super nice. And then again, you can over rehab it as well. If you're already into a deal and it has chronic weaknesses throughout the home, it has chronic, uh, just weak walls. You push on the walls and they just shake, like scarily they shake. Um, you know, like there's a tornado or something bearing down on you. That is not a good thing. So chronic weak walls throughout the home, chronic mold throughout the home, chronic soft spots, chronic leaks, rewiring an entire mobile home. Uh, if the mobile home has to be moved, that's not a deal breaker for every mobile home or for me or depends, like, you know, it depends on the deal. Uh, but I wanted to include that. Also, if the home is very small, depending on the area, depending on the age of the home, if it's functionally obsolete or not. Also, specific park rules that may make things difficult or local city rules or ordinances that make things difficult. Those, that's a, those could potentially be deal breakers that you would just want to get out, would want to liquidate, would want to break even, and you know, not do a deal that was resemblance to something like this. So that's the pass and you know tear down and kind of liquidate. But above that, we have you know almost livable homes and livable properties. And to make these repairs, we would want to deep clean the carpets. So if you want to deep clean the carpets, because uh, the carpets in that home look pretty good, we want to deep clean them so they have no smells. We want to fix the kitchen floor. You saw where those linoleum squares had been removed. Um, when you're walking around in the mobile home, you can take off your shoes and walk around the carpet on your, on your bare feet or with your socks. You can really feel imperfections, um, kind of watch out for maybe loose nails or anything like that. But walking around on your socks definitely tells you kind of the, what the subfloor feels like. Fix the kitchen floor. Also, you noticed in the corner by the window, there may be some wood rot down there. Any exterior window where the rain has just been hitting, uh, water can seep into that window, or seep into the wall behind the window, into the window and go onto the floor. And so we want, want to remove and replace any wood rot that was there. Remove it, replace it with good wood, and then cover it. Um, so fix the kitchen floor, clean the interior, fix the math, master bath faucet, if you, if you caught that. Uh, remove and replace any wadded wo rotted wood by the washer and dryer, uh, if you saw that as well. Add, floors, uh, add floor registers or floor vent registers to the vents, those uh, vent covers. Add linoleum uh, to the kitchen or vinyl or tile. Uh, tile is going to be more expensive typically, linoleum or vinyl um, are your most affordable um, good bets to go to go with and then these with the uh, asterisks here these stars those are all things that I'm going to keep up throughout these entire three mobile homes that we're going to walk through keep up good appliances in there or right you know add appliances if they're not there not the washer and dryer but the sink or the uh, stove and the uh, refrigerator um, also the home should be level that pretty much makes sense. No leaks anywhere throughout the home. Uh, electric plumbing uh, should, should both work. You can sell a home if it has leaks, but if you're gonna sell it, especially on payments, you might not wanna get that back and the leaks haven't been fixed. So that's why I mentioned I would want you to do those yourself, ideally. Fix the leaks um, in the roof or in anywhere in the walls or in the plumbing or underneath the home if there's any leaks. No soft spots, no mold, no bugs, no smells. And the heat and AC, those should work. 
Um, you should know that when you buy the home. It's optional when you sell, but it's recommended. If you can get the AC and the heat working, that's the way to go. You don't have to. Depending on your state and if you're a licensed dealer, then you may have to. But there's people around the country buying and selling mobile homes without the AC and heat working. Um, but it is recommended, at least on this video. Uh, now, that's to get the home to a livable standard, above livable standard. You can start to rent it. You can sell it with discount cash. You can sell it on monthly payments with a down payment. Keep in mind that you're going to get a lower down payment if the home needs more work versus over here, you're going to get a much higher down payment depending on your area, the time of the year, the home itself. Let's talk about the next step about getting the home rent ready. I want you to do everything here as well as put in new carpets fix the cabinet doors that are there. You can go ahead and fix cabinet doors back here, but it's not gonna be a deal breaker. That's why it's here. Also add uh, outlet covers. Again, that's not gonna be a deal breaker. Someone's not gonna not wanna move in because those two things aren't done. So, but if you're gonna rent it, if you're gonna sell it for a, a higher retail price, you want more people interested, we need to button up all those loose ends. The working AC and heat, that should be working if you plan on renting it or selling it for a kind of a higher retail price. And then if you really want to sell it, it depends on the home, it depends on the area as well. If you can, depending on if you can attract a high priced buyer, somebody that has five figures, high five figures, six figures in cash, or is willing to go to the bank to get that, if that home even qualifies for that type of, you know, borrowing that kind of, that kind of money, we're going to add an upgrade the mobile home, a lot of things in the mobile home. Again, we want to get that wow factor, whether it's from the 1980s or the 2010s um, or a newer, we have to get that wow factor in there by upgrading kitchen countertops, kitchen floors, the bathroom sink and lights, uh, paint the interior of the home, new baseboards, new window trim, new window blinds, ceiling lights and fans throughout the home, upgrade appliances, in addition to getting everything looking good cosmetically and structurally. Um, that's what we would like to do to go ahead and you know sell it for a, a retail price. Again, not every property, not every area, you can sell for a higher retail price. Um, and again, the more that you fix up, you may get a higher price or you may be down here and you may not get as much as you want. Um, so again, when you do these repairs, you may or may not get the money back out depending on your area. That's why it's so important. It shouldn't be a mystery. You should know before you do these repairs what your comps say, what's needed, what people are looking for, what they expect. Um, because if they're looking at comps, then they're gonna be looking at yours as well. And yours doesn't have to be the best thing out there you know, in the entire country, it has to be a nice home at a good value, good, good value comparable to the, to the things near, nearby. Um, and then if you're going to over rehab a home, it can actually be some of this stuff. If you have an older property or you're not intending on, you know, selling it for cash for a high retail price or bank financing, you can go ahead and sell a property on payments. You can do all these repairs and somebody's going to move in and love it and they're not gonna complain. But you can also not upgrade this. You can also sell it on payments for a, probably a pretty good, you know, substantial value. And you didn't have to put all the time and effort and money and labor and holding cost into this home at this point. So you can sell it to a buyer that, you know, maybe has a little bit less down, but there'll be a, you can pass along the savings that you're not spending here. You can pass along that to your buyer. Uh, so I hope that that made sense for home number one. Uh, right now we're going to go to home number two.
Well, Mobile Home 2 needed a little bit more work. Uh, it was a two bedroom, so if you decide to rent it, it will rent for less money. Uh, if you decide to sell it, it'll sell for a bit less money. Uh, and it was a little bit of an older home. Uh, so what do you do? Depending on the area, depending on the time of year, your exit strategy, let's talk about some of these repairs. Uh, the chronic issues and the rewiring and all that, that stays the same. Uh, I went ahead and I did change the livable. This home needs different repairs than that first home that we walked through. Uh, it needs, in my opinion, the carpet replaced. Uh, it's optional, but it's highly recommended. If you don't do it, somebody going into this home is probably going to replace the carpet. Um, so be aware of that depending on the price you sell for or the down payment that you want to collect. Again, if you're going to be fixing the home just to this standard, you're going to be getting it to a point where you can sell it for a discounted cash price or payments, possibly rent it but you should really do these other things if you want to rent it. Um, we, want to, we want to clean the interior of the home, clean the appliances, fix all the soft spots, add smoke detectors, cool seal the roof, um, which is adding a sealant to the roof um, to make it look nice, uniform white, to plug up any holes. That's just a good protocol whenever you first get into a property. If it's uh, metal or tar or flat or slightly sloped type of roof, uh, or even a pitch roof, as long as it's not shingles, um, and then replace the vinyl or tile or linoleum in the kitchen. Depending on the materials that you use, you can spend a lot of money or a little bit of money. And what we're looking for is to protect the floor and look nice. And then I kept these from previously. These are the same as we saw on home number one. All of these to make the home livable and decent. And again, if you're going to have a long-term business selling properties, that are nice you know and that are livable is probably maybe what you want to do now if you're going to rent the home out then fixing up those holes the major ones and the minor ones the scrapes in the drywall that you saw throughout the home uh, that would be very very important also make sure that the heat ac and heat are working um, and again to fix the holes the major scrapes you can do that over here but it's not going to be a deal breaker uh, most of the time again you can do that but you don't need to uh, in my opinion if you want to just get the home to a standard where most people will be interested in it but if you want to go ahead and get more people interested more people with higher money that want the property uh, then you'd want to put the working AC unit in there fix those minor scrapes in the drywall um, and then if you really want to get the home super improved to sell it for top dollar depending on your market if you know that there are comparable sales for this type of age and size of home in the last few months in this area that you're looking within a few miles not a few miles within a half of a mile or within the park itself then we might want to add or upgrade kitchen countertops kitchen floors bathroom sinks paint baseboards window trim blinds ceiling fans uh, upgrade appliances something i didn't mention over here is if the amp service coming into the home is you know, under 50, that may not be something that we would want to look into. We certainly couldn't have any sort of too much AC or too many appliances working at that point. It's probably an older home as well or an RV. Um, but that's if you want to make the home super beautiful. And then to over, you know, to out, to spend too much money would be to fix things like we talked about before. So that was home number two. Uh, and again, I hope that those repairs sort of made sense and you saw a lot about you know, you obviously saw a lot of these repairs yourself. I hope that made sense. Now we're gonna go to number three.
Well, that was home number three, and believe it or not, purchased for the right price, that home absolutely will create a good value. Um, we can purchase it, we can clean it up, we can resell it, uh, potentially for cash, potentially for payments, potentially rent it out as well, uh, depending on the park. So with all that said, the blue is still the same, that doesn't change. In this home, we do, in my opinion, want to replace the carpets, paint the interior, clean the interior appliances, or make sure they're working or add you know used appliances um, newly used appliances fix the holes in the walls uh, add window units to the home and make sure that they're secured add outlet covers paint the cabinets add working appliances fix rotted wood underneath the sink as well if you saw that and then all the other issues that we've already previously discussed uh, we want to fix the back door if we're going to get it rent ready we want to do all the same stuff to get it rent and ready, but then we also want to fix the back door. We want to add blinds, in my opinion, and make sure that the AC and the heat are working. If you're going to upgrade the home past the point where, you know, it's 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 going to be like for top dollar, we would really have to remove a lot of the uh, material in there. Remove the kitchen countertops, remove the cabinets, replace everything, replace the kitchen floor covering. Um, upgrade that, the bathroom lights and sinks, paint the interior, add baseboards, window trim, ceiling lights and fans. Like I said before, upgrade the appliances. For a home that old to do all that, you'd put a lot of money into the property and probably not get back all your money. Or if you did, it would take time uh, in order to find the right buyer or to sell on payments or to rent it out for a while and then resell it you know, down the road potentially. I really hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me, comment below or email me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Uh, the point of this video uh, really was to help you get an understanding that the repairs that you make, uh, you shouldn't be making repairs willy nilly. We wanna make repairs based on the exit strategy that we have in mind, on the realistic exit strategy that we have in mind because we know our buyers, because we know the market. Uh, so I really hope that that all made sense. Uh, thanks for watching. The main reason I wanted to make this video, I've been making sort of a few videos that sort of revolve around repairs and making sure that we know what we want to sell the property for. It's based in reality. We know what repairs we want to make before we buy the home. We know what we want to sell it for. We know the buyers because uh, the reason it's sort of personal to me or the reason I want to make sure that you understand this is because I know that you can lose a lot of money and this is a big mistake, not only selling to the right person, but also making sure that you don't overspend or over improve on the property or if you under improve to know you know realistically what you can and cannot sell for the reason why this is so sort of important to me is because I was leading this real estate investors club uh, it had to be over a decade ago um, in, in Tampa and I was investing in mobile homes and telling people what I was doing and I was love having fun with the group we were meeting at a bar every week and I sort of inherited this group there was a few dozen people that came to it every every week and they knew I was a mobile home investor I tell people to you know find me properties we'll do different deals together or we'll uh, you know, give them fees like a bird, a bird dog fee or a finder's fee and people inevitably did some deals on their own and a couple weeks later you know after they bought the home they tried to do what they could they had it on the market they approached me and it's like John you know us two guys and I knew the people fairly well we didn't hang out outside of that group and they bought three mobile homes in a bad area of town where they shouldn't have bought not a bad area it's actually a really really nice area but that was sort of the reason it wasn't indicative to this type of investing and so they didn't know what they were doing they over improved they weren't getting the prices they want the lot rent was super high they were unhappy and I know one of the gentlemen Stephen really it did a financial like it, it hurt him financially um, the other gentleman I didn't know as well um, but I don't think that they ever invested in mobile homes I think they just they, they lost money they just got out of it with what they could so anyway that's a, a part of the reason why I want to make this video and why it's important um, so anyway I hope that that makes sense <laughs> or thanks for watching for the three people that are still listening uh, please subscribe please like this video and share it if it was helpful I'll talk to you soon bye, -bye.